Hey folks, welcome back to my channel here at Coco Lencho Japan. Thanks for uh, following us. So uh, not too long ago, I had the opportunity to uh, meet up with a, a subscriber and he is also a veteran and he's looking at purchasing an, an IKEA here in the area that I live in. And he provided a couple good recommendations and I take that to heart. And he recommended that I should cover a little bit more about why I chose to move to Japan or why I chose to remain in Japan. And it got me thinking, maybe I have talked about that, but I am certainly working on a, a video right now. And I've talked about it, about the our journeys thus far. But so then after that, I started looking at the analytics at one of my uh, most uh, watch videos as, as a matter of fact my most watched video which is uh, we bought and renovated a Japanese open house IKEA in rural Japan and the renovation cost and when I started looking at the analytics of that video it was actually quite interesting to see that the majority of the subscribers or the viewers were my age group and I'll go ahead and uh, kind of break that down here a little bit more so then I started thinking it was like well wow you know those people are me and most of them are men um, so I in a way I'm a direct reflection of of the people that are tuning in so what I'd like to do is turn or turn this around what are you pursuing what do you want to uh, know more of what would you like me to cover more as I have covered in different other videos uh, we have been living and this former IKEA about a year, I was almost to the date. And uh, we went through about an eight month renovation and I'm working on that video. But this video that I just talked about kind of covers a lot of that and the process that we went through and the renovation costs. So if you're interested in that, please check it out. And uh, also I have another video, how I live here in Japan currently. Uh, my wife is Japanese, however, we came back to the United States after serving 22 years in the army in different places of the world in the United States. We came to Japan and she came back because I have never lived in Japan before. As the uh, time goes by, I feel more and more comfortable in Japan. COVID happens and everything and all of us know that that just changed the whole world. It changed the cost of living, politics, people, I don't know. It just changed it just changed a whole lot for at least from my view uh sitting over here and somewhat sheltered in Japan. I think uh just to kind of answer some of his questions I'd say or his recommendations. I mean, I could go on forever, I think. Uh, then actually he said I can think of 12 reasons right now uh, we don't want to do that right now I would say my, my top three is really safety Japan is one of the safest countries in the world and after living in Mexico the United States uh, multiple deployments to uh, combat zones um, I'm tired I'm tired I'm tired of looking behind my shoulder. I'm tired of walking into a restaurant and always going for the corner where I can see everything. My wife always knows. We would go to a restaurant and she she would just sit somewhere automatically because she knew that I, I always had to be facing the, the door, the windows, some sort of uh, paranoia that I, I have, I guess. But here in Japan, as time went by, I don't do it anymore. Um, so safety, safety is, quite frankly, one of the main reasons. Another one is the people. The people are extremely nice, extremely polite. You know, they may not like you. For all you know, they don't They don't like you. For all you know, they hate you, but it does not come across. And quite frankly, I don't think so. You, you hear stories about, you know, oh, no gaijins here, or, you know, no Americans here, or no foreigners here, uh, whatever the case may be. I guess if you're going to those kind of places and usually they'll be at bars or something like that. So, you know, I don't frequent that. So I've never had that, that happen to me. Uh, but the people are super polite, really nice. You go to a store, they always greet you uh, kindly. You go to a restaurant, the customer service is superb. And as a matter of fact, uh, a little cultural tip here. We don't tip in Japan. You do not tip. As a matter of fact, it's offensive to tip. So if you're coming to Japan, if you're not aware, don't tip. 
uh, sometimes like the taxi driver you can give it like the little extra and so on but it's it's not customary so and again they are not expecting you to tip i really really enjoy that because you know i grew up in mexico and love the mexican culture and i would love to go back to mexico someday but one of the things i don't like about when i go to mexico or even the united states now is that they are always expecting a tip and at some point you just have to say no no mas i can't keep on giving you tips and also believe it or not the cost of living uh, a lot of us have probably listened to all the stories that Japan uh, is super expensive, Japan is super modern and so on. But you know, in the countryside, and it doesn't have to be out in the sticks countryside, Japanese, when they say Inaka, which is a country and the city of say 100,000 people, it's Inaka, it's two country. So Japan, Tokyo, that's city. Me, I'm a small country boy from Mexico. I don't know, 2,000 people in my hometown there in Quila, Jalisco. That's country to me. Our uh, little town that I live here, a couple of thousand people, that's country to me. And it's very, very cheap, actually. Quite frankly, it's a whole lot cheaper than many places in the United States or other places of the world. Um, there are some things that are more expensive. Say, if I'm going to drive to Tokyo, which I did not too long ago, in our camper van, I got some of those videos, so check them out. You pay tolls. You will pay over $100 worth of tolls to Hiroshima area all the way to Tokyo. And gas is a little bit more expensive than the United States as well. Food. Uh, and other entertainment stuff like that is relatively much cheaper. Possibly in the future, a retiree here under my military pension and social security and whatnot, I have the unique opportunity to live in Japan at a very reasonable cost of living. However, I don't want to get your hopes up because Japan, so far, they are not very immigration friendly, such as say Mexico, Portugal, Thailand, and those typical countries where you can show that you have a certain amount of savings or as a passive income, such as social security or your military pension or something like that. You're granted a, a visa that doesn't matter here in Japan. It doesn't matter if you own 10 houses, it doesn't matter here in Japan. Your best, uh, easiest <laughs> is if you're married to Japanese, such as in my case. Uh, but there are other avenues. Uh, there are other avenues that other people are pursuing, uh, such as um, digital nomad visa, but that is only very short term and, and it's not very popular. But there is also the business startup visa. I've talked about the Benton Homestead folks. They live in Omishima. They purchased two Akiyas and turned one into an Airbnb. That's the way that they're going. Um, there's other opportunities. Check them out. Uh, they are very, very informative in that topic. Their link is in my description below. Their channel is there as well as one of my favorite channels. Very, very informative. Check them out, please. So there's others, but I think that Japan is relaxing uh, little by little. With that being said, let me go ahead and dive into the analytics of that video. And I just wanted to show you and please share with us, me, so what are you looking for? Are you looking to move to Japan? Are you just curious? Do you still want to move, but you, let's say, mm, English is not your thing or teaching English is not your thing? Uh, again, check out the video that I, it's a little boring, it hasn't gotten a whole lot of views, but it's informative in my opinion. I have been here in Japan under sofa status for seven years, which is not very common for like man, YouTubers, right? Uh, but it, in my opinion, it is informative because I have been prior government services and now a contractor, so I've seen both worlds and I've been around the block a couple times, so please ask questions. Let's say you think that, well, I just can't go to Japan because one, I can't teach English, I don't want to teach English, or <laughs> I'm not made out to be a model, whatever, you know, the, the stereotypical jobs uh, here that a lot of foreigners get in Japan. SOFA status is an avenue, it's, but unfortunately, mainly for Americans, but as you see in the analytics, 
Most of the viewers are from the United States. So if you have a skill set that you think that you can, one, serve or continue serving if you have not served in the military, serve the military community by uh, teaching at the schools, by being an electronic technician, by working at the military exchange, the commissary. There are many, many jobs, many jobs. Check out the video, I'll talk about it, and if you have any more questions, but let's go ahead and dive into this video that I was talking about. Just kind of cover some of the analytics. And by the way, you get to see how much I have been paid by YouTube since I became monetized for this particular video. Okay, so here, as you can see, as I talked about, this is the particular video right here. And again, the title is we bought and renovated a Japanese empty house, which is really the term I, sh I should say for an IKEA. Uh, and primarily in rural Japan. You find IKEAs anywhere, uh, in Tokyo, anywhere. They're everywhere because of the declining population here in Japan. And I also talk about the renovation cost. The renovation cost, I talk about it there, but it was not, mm, let's say, budget friendly. It was a little bit on the upper side, which is not common, or I say most people that are looking for an IKEA, I believe, that they're looking for a bargain. In our case, it was more, and I talk about it, it's more of a quality of life. And that's, it's, do you do what you want to do for us is our quality of life. Let's go ahead and, uh, again, dive into these analytics a little bit. And I think it's kind of interesting if you really want to learn more. And, and and I encourage you to start your own YouTube channel if you want. You know, get over the fact that, uh, trust me, I don't feel comfortable right now, but, you know, whatever, you just go with it, right? So, since this video was published, uh, I published it in September of 2023. And for reference right now, it is August of 2024. So almost a year. And um, man, it has gotten almost 50,000, 45,958 as of right now. Um, yes, they not viral like people talk about, you know, a million views. And so I'm like, hey, help us out, you know, Check it out. But I mean, 45,000 people, uh, 50,000 people have tuned in. They definitely have not watched the whole thing, but I'm still honored, humbled that anyone would want to even tune in. Yeah, the analytics are pretty interesting. As you can see, you know, back in, uh, uh, actually I lied. I published it uh, November, November 11th, November 11th. Um, you know, it started off a little slow, a little slow and so on. And then somewhere around, let's see, what was this? Somewhere in March, actually, it kind of went up. And for some reason, they just start going up and up and up and up and more. So far, I have earned, as you can see right there, $138 from this video. The cool thing about YouTube is it's kind of sort of like a passive income. I mean, once once you publish it and throw it out there, if it sticks, it sticks. If it doesn't, then oh well, move on, learn from it. But mm, I mean, this is going to keep going up. I, who knows how much eventually it will, it will earn. But as long as this channel is alive and there's an interest in this topic, it'll keep on going up. So I forgot to mention this for reference. I am 53. I just turned 53 not too long ago. And let me go ahead and pause right there with this. A little public health announcement. As I said, I just turned 53. Folks, uh, talking about cost of living, I just went, finally, uh, I know I procrastinated for a couple of years, went out and did a colonoscopy. And you know, I'll throw it out there. Uh, I know this is the topic that a lot of us men don't like to talk about and I'm telling the world. Uh, but I, I went and did it. Uh, it cost me, a thousand dollars, about a thousand dollars out of pocket because I have health insurance, US health insurance. I just submit the claim and I reimburse the majority of it. That gives you an idea. How much does it cost in the United States? I know other countries is different because of the different healthcare systems, but uh, how much does it cost in the States? I have no idea, but I'm pretty sure it's not $1,000. Folks, men, uh, get yourself checked. I just, I chose to stay awake for the whole event. It was um, uncomfortable. The experience of drinking that stuff and, you know, letting it all out and everything for 24 hours, not fun, not fun at all. Not looking forward to doing it again. Again, I chose to stay awake for the whole thing. 
next time not sure if i'm gonna do that or not i think i probably learned my lesson there and they did find some polyps that uh, were non-cancerous thank god so again don't be too proud because something simple like that may derail your your desire to move to japan or abroad or rv full-time or whatever the case may be i got a little sidetracked but go get yourself checked out views uh let's see all oh, this you know and actually this one here has gained uh 864 subscribers so all of you who have subscribed because you watched this video thank you very much and to all the other ones thank you very much as well but let's go ahead and uh, uh, what i wanted to talk about right here is the audience the audience i think was again very interesting check it out females about 16 percent males huge number 83 percent and now let's go into the age you know there's different ages you know not surprising 25 to 34 you know, only about 3.1%. I get it. You guys are young. Enjoy life. Do what you got to do. You're not interested in buying an old Japanese house in, in, in the countryside of Japan. You are the ones that are looking to go watch uh, manga, anime up in Tokyo. Go do that. Um, 35 to 44, you're about 24%. I think those of you, you're like, yeah, you know, maybe in about 10 years from now. Got it, been there, done that. And now we get into the 45 and 54. It, that's that's really more my category, I, I, I guess. I got like a, one more year to go, uh, 24%. But again, well, I thought it was interesting, the 55 to 64, you either Mm, getting ready to retire soon or your early retirement if that's the case let me know i'm really curious about that topic uh early retirement is one of my goals um 55 through 64 uh you why 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 are you tuning in from the united states 33 percent are coming from the united states and then you got japan australia canada united kingdom and actually let's go check out the other countries i think this is really cool some random places um let's see where where are we at the views let me see italy india sweden taiwan brazil hong kong spain the netherlands thailand new zealand indonesia malaysia and so on um pretty interesting pretty interesting um and then you could go into the cities and so on but again let me go back to the 55 through 64 group why why what what are what are you looking for what is there is there something that i am not covering that you would like to see uh please let me know i'm also trying to um do a better job with my membership i only have two members so i really don't push it what i'm offering as a member is uh behind the scenes raw data and then also what i want to do right now is offer you a member the opportunity to um at least suggest what you would like to see where you would like for me to go visit uh, whether it's just a store the you know the the convenience store the hardware store a hospital you know or or mm, don't ask me to to climb mount fuji i have not done that yet eventually i might do that but i'm not committing myself to that one but um now that we have a camper van uh I, I don't know there's if there's a restaurant um so for those of you that if you want to buy me coffee or or, or become a member um throw it in there i keep track and if i happen to be in that area i promise to try i can't i can't guarantee you that i'll do it but at least i promise to try and we'll send you a shout out so anyways folks with that I don't know this was totally unplanned but i really thought that i should um think about more what um, the subscriber uh mentioned uh it got me thinking and um i really really do appreciate everyone watching thus far and thanks for following the journey and if you have any questions of everything i just uh, covered please comment below if you don't want that to be seen my email is in the description as well. Shoot me an email. I will respond. All right. Have a great day. Peace.